The grammar of American Sign Language ASL, is the best studied of any sign language, though research is still in its infancy, dating back only to William Stokoe in the 1960s. Morphology ASL morphology is to a large extent iconic. This shows up especially well in reduplication and indexicality. Derivation Compounding is used to derive new words in ASL, which often differ in meaning from their constituent signs. For example, the signs face and strong compound to create a new sign face caret strong, meaning to resemble. Compounds undergo the phonetic process of hold deletion, whereby the holds at the end of the first constituent and the beginning of the second are alighted. Many ASL nouns are derived from verbs. This may be done either by reduplicating the movement of the verb if the verb has a single movement, or by restraining, making smaller and faster, the movement of the verb if it already has repeated movement. For example, the noun chair is derived from the verb sit through reduplication. Another productive method is available for deriving nouns from non-stative verbs. This form of derivation modifies the verb's movement, reduplicating it in a trilled manner, small, quick, stiff movements. For example, this method is used to derive the noun action from the verb act. Characteristic adjectives, which refer to inherent states, may be derived from adjectives which refer to incidental or temporary states. Characteristic adjectives always use both hands, even if the source adjective only uses one, and they always have repeated, circular movement. Additionally, if the source adjective was one handed, the derived adjective has alternating movement. Trilling may also be used productively to derive adjectives with an ish meaning, e.g. blue becomes bluish. ASL occasionally uses suffixation in derivation, but less often than in English. Agent nouns may be derived from verbs by adding the suffix agent and deleting the final hold of the verb, e.g. teach plus agent. Teacher. Single quote dot. Superlatives are also formed by suffixation, e.g. Smart plus most. Smartest. Certain types of signs, for example those relating to time and age, may incorporate numbers by assimilating their handshape. For example, the word weak has handshape b, with the weak hand and one, with the active hand, the active hand. S handshape may be changed to the handshape of any number up to 9 to indicate that many weeks. There are about 20 non manual modifiers in ASL, which are either adjectival or adverbial. For example, the adverb, th, realized as the tongue being placed between the teeth, means carelessly, lazily, when combined with a verb. Degree Mouthing, making what appear to be speech sounds, is important for fluent signing, and it has morphological uses. For example, one may sign, man tall, to indicate the man is tall, but by mouthing the syllable cha while signing, tall, the phrase becomes that man is enormous. There are other ways of modifying a verb or adjective to make it more intense. These are all more or less equivalent to adding the word, very. In English, which morphology is used depends on the word being modified. Certain words which are short in English, such as sad and mad, are sometimes fingerspelled rather than signed to mean very sad and very mad. However, the concept of very sad or very mad can be portrayed with the use of exaggerated body movements and facial expressions. Reduplication of the signs may also occur to emphasize the degree of the statement. Some signs are produced with an exaggeratedly large motion, so that they take up more sign space than normal. This may involve a back and forth scissoring motion of the arms to indicate that the sign ought to be yet larger, but that one is physically incapable of making it big enough. Many other signs are given a slow, tense production. The fact that this modulation is morphological rather than merely mimetic can be seen in the sign for fast, both very slow and very fast, are signed by making the motion either unusually slowly or unusually quickly than it is in the citation forms of slow and fast. 
not exclusively by making it slower for very slow and faster for very fast. Reduplication Reduplication, morphological repetition, is extremely common in ASL. Generally the motion of the sign is shortened as well as repeated. Nouns may be derived from verbs through reduplication. For example, the noun chair is formed from the verb to sit by repeating it with a reduced degree of motion. Similar relationships exist between acquisition and to get, airplane and to fly, on an airplane, also window and to open, close a window. Reduplication is commonly used to express intensity as well as several verbal aspects, see below. It is also used to derive signs such as, every two weeks, from, two weeks, and is used for verbal number, see below, where the reduplication is iconic for the repetitive meaning of the sign. Compounds Many ASL words are historically compounds. However, the two elements of these signs have fused, with features being lost from one or both, to create what might be better called a blend than a compound. Typically only the final hold, see above, remains from the first element, and any reduplication is lost from the second. An example is the verb agree, which derives from the two signs think and alike. The verb think is signed by bringing a one hand inward and touching the forehead, a move and a hold. Alike is signed by holding two one hands parallel, pointing outward, and bringing them together two or three times. The compound, blend agree starts as think ends, with the index finger touching the forehead, the final hold of that sign. In addition, the weak hand is already in place, in anticipation of the next part of the sign. Then the hand at the forehead is brought down parallel to the weak hand, it approaches but does not make actual contact, and there is no repetition. Affixes ASL, like other mature signed languages, makes extensive use of morphology. Many of ASL's affixes are combined simultaneously rather than sequentially. For example, Ted Sapala. S. Seminal work on ASL verbs of motion revealed that these signs consist of many different affixes, articulated simultaneously according to complex grammatical constraints. This differs from the concatenative morphology of many spoken languages, which except for suprasegmental features such as tone are tightly constrained by the sequential nature of voice sounds. ASL does have a limited number of concatenative affixes. For example, the agentive suffix, similar to the English. Er, is made by placing two B or five hands in front of the torso, palms facing each other, and lowering them. On its own this sign means person. In a compound sign following a verb, it is a suffix for the performer of the action, as in driver and teacher. However, it cannot generally be used to translate English er, as it is used with a much more limited set of verbs. It is very similar to the ULO suffix in Esperanto, meaning person by itself and related person when combined with other words. An ASL prefix, touching the chin, is used with number signs to indicate years old. The prefix completely assimilates with the initial handshape of the number. For instance, 14 is signed with a B hand that bends several times at the knuckles. The chin touch prefix in 14 years old is thus also made with a B hand. For 3 years old, however, the prefix is made with a 3 hand. Numeral incorporation and classifiers Rather than relying on sequential affixes, ASL makes heavy use of simultaneous modification of signs. One example of this is found in the aspectual system, see below. Another is numeral incorporation. There are several families of two-handed signs which require one of the hands to take the handshape of a numeral. Many of these deal with time. For example, drawing the dominant hand lengthwise across the palm and fingers of a flat B hand indicates a number of weeks. The dominant hand takes the form of a numeral from 1 to 9 to specify how many weeks. There are analogous signs for weeks ago and weeks from now, etc. Though in practice several of these signs are only found with the lower numerals. ASL also has a system of classifiers which may be incorporated into signs. 
A fist may represent an inactive object such as a rock, this is the default or neutral classifier. A horizontal ily hand may represent an aircraft, a horizontal three hand, thumb pointing up and slightly forward, a motor vehicle, an upright g hand a person on foot, an upright b hand a pair of people on foot, and so on through higher numbers of people. These classifiers are moved through sign space to iconically represent the actions of their reference. For example, an ily hand may lift off, or land on, a horizontal B hand to sign an aircraft taking off or landing, a three hand may be brought down on a B hand to sign parking a car, an A G hand may be brought toward a B hand to represent one person approaching two. The frequency of classifier use depends greatly on genre, occurring at a rate of 17.7% in narratives but only 1.1% in casual speech and 0.9% in formal speech. Frames Frames are a morphological device that may be unique to sign languages Liddell 2004. They are incomplete sets of the features which make up signs, and they combine with existing signs, absorbing features from them to form a derived sign. It is the frame which specifies the number and nature of segments in the resulting sign, while the basic signs it combines with lose all but one or two of their original features. 1. The weekly frame, consists of a simple downward movement. It combines with the signs for the days of the week, which then lose their inherent movement. For example, Monday consists of an M O hand made with a circling movement. Monday weekly, that is, on Mondays, is therefore signed as an M O hand that drops downward, but without the circling movement. A similar all-day frame, a sideward pan, combines with times of the day, such as morning and afternoon, which likewise keep their hand shape and location but lose their original movement. Numeral incorporation see above, also uses frames. However, in ASL frames are most productively utilized for verbal aspect. Verbal aspect While there is no grammatical tense in ASL, there are numerous verbal aspects. These are produced by modulating the verb through reduplication, by placing the verb in an aspectual frame see above, or with a combination of these means. An example of an aspectual frame is the unrealized inceptive aspect, just about to x, illustrated here with the verb, to tell, to tell, is an indexical, directional verb, where the index finger, a g hand, begins with a touch to the chin and then moves outward to point out the recipient of the telling. To be just about to tell, retains just the locus and the initial chin touch, which now becomes the final hold of the sign. All other features from the basic verb, in this case, the outward motion and pointing, are dropped and replaced by features from the frame, which are shared with the unrealized inceptive aspects of other verbs such as look at, wash the dishes, yell, flirt, etc. These frame features are eye gaze toward the locus which is no longer pointed at with the hand, an open jaw, and a hand, or hands, in the case of two hand verbs, in front of the trunk which moves in an arc to the onset location of the basic verb, in this case, touching the chin, while the trunk rotates and the signer inhales, catching her breath during the final hold. The hand shape throughout the sign is whichever is required by the final hold, in this case a G hand. The variety of aspects in ASL can be illustrated by the verb to be sick, which involves the middle finger of the Y8 hand touching the forehead, and which can be modified by a large number of frames. Several of these involve reduplication, which may but need not be analyzed as part of the frame. The appropriate non-manual features are not described here. Stative. To be sick is made with simple iterated contact, typically with around four iterations. This is the basic citation form of the verb. Incoative. To get sick, to take sick. Is made with a single straight movement to contact and a hold of the finger on the forehead. Predisposinal. To be sickly, to be prone to get sick. Is made with incomplete motion, three even circular cycles without contact. This aspect adds reduplication to verbs such as. To look at which do not already contain repetition. Susceptative. To get sick easily. 
is made with a thrusting motion, the onset is held, then there is a brief, tense thrust that is checked before actual contact can be made. Frequentative. To be often sick is given a marcato articulation, a regular beat, with four to six iterations, and marked onsets and holds. Susceptive and frequentative may be combined to mean to get sick easily and often. Four brief thrusts on a marked, steady beat, without contact with the forehead. Protractive. To be continuously sick is made with a long, tense hold and no movement at all. Incessant. To get sick incessantly has a reduplicated tremolo articulation, a dozen tiny, tense, uneven iterations, as rapid as possible and without contact. Durative. To be sick for a long time is made with a reduplicated elliptical motion, three slow, uneven cycles, with a heavy downward brush of the forehead and an arching return. Iterative. To get sick over and over again is made with three tense movements and slow returns to the onset position. Intensive. To be very sick. Is given a single tense articulation, a tense onset hold followed by a single very rapid motion to a long final hold. Resultative. To become fully sick. That is, a complete change of health, is made with an accelerando articulation, a single elongated tense movement which starts slowly and heavily, accelerating to a long final hold. Approximative. To be sort of sick, to be a little sick, is made with a reduplicated lax articulation, a spatially extremely reduced, minimal movement, involving a dozen iterations without contact. Semblative. To appear to be sick. No description. Increasing. To get more and more sick. Is made with the movements becoming more and more intense. These modulations readily combine with each other to create yet finer distinctions. Not all verbs take all aspects, and the forms they do take will not necessarily be completely analogous to the verb illustrated here. Conversely, not all aspects are possible with this one verb. Aspect is unusual in ASL in that transitive verbs derived for aspect lose their transitivity. That is, while you can sign dog chew bone for the dog chewed on a bone, or she look at me for she looked at me, you cannot do the same in the durative to mean the dog not on the bone or she stared at me. Instead, you must use other strategies, such as a topic construction, see below, to avoid having an object for the verb. Verbal number Reduplication is also used for expressing verbal number. Verbal number indicates that the action of the verb is repeated. In the case of ASL it is apparently limited to transitive verbs, where the motion of the verb is either extended or repeated to cover multiple object or recipient loci. Simple plurality of action can also be conveyed with reduplication, but without indexing any object loci. In fact, such aspectual forms do not allow objects, as noted above. There are specific dual forms, and for some signers trial forms, as well as plurals. With dual objects, the motion of the verb may be made twice with one hand, or simultaneously with both, while with plurals the object loci may be taken as a group by using a single sweep of the signing hand while the verbal motion is being performed, or individuated by iterating the move across the sweep. For example, to ask someone a question is signed by flexing the index finger of an upright G hand in the direction of that person. The dual involves flexing it at both object loci, sequentially with one hand or simultaneously with both. The simple plural involves a single flexing which spans the object group while the hand arcs across it, and the individuated plural involves multiple rapid flexings while the hand arcs. If the singular verb uses reduplication, that is lost in the dual and plural forms. Name signs there are three types of personal name signs in ASL, arbitrary, descriptive, and finger-spelled. Once given, names are for life, apart from changing from one of the latter types to an arbitrary sign in childhood. Name signs are usually assigned by another member of the deaf community, and signal inclusion in that community. Name signs are not used to address people, as names are in English, but are used only for third-person reference, and usually only when the person is absent. The majority of people, probably well in excess of 90%, have arbitrary name signs. 
These are initialized signs. The hand shape is the initial of one of the English names of the person, usually the first. The sign may occur in neutral space, with a tremble, with a double tap, as a noun, at one of a limited number of specific locations, such as the side of the chin, the temple, or the elbow, or moving across a location or between two locations, with a single tap at each. Single location signs are simpler in connotation, like English. V. Double location signs are fancier, like English. Veronica. Sam Sapala 1992, collected 525 simple arbitrary name signs like these. There are two constraints on arbitrary signs. First, it should not mean anything. That is, it should not duplicate an existing ASL word. Second, there should not be more than one person with the name sign in the local community. If a person moves to a new community where someone already has their name sign, then the newcomer is obligated to modify theirs. This is usually accomplished by compounding the hand shape, so that the first tap of the sign takes the initial of the person's first English name, and the second tap takes the initial of their last name. There are potentially thousands of such compound initial signs. Descriptive name signs are not initialized, but rather use ASL classifiers. They tend to be assigned and used by children, rather like Blinky. In English, parents do not give such names to their children, but most deaf people do not have deaf parents and are assigned their name sign by classmates in their first school for the deaf. At most 10% of deaf people retain such name signs into adulthood. Descriptive signs were perhaps more common when deaf education was first established. Clerk and Th. Gallaudet all have descriptive name signs, though Clerks was presumably his French sign language name. Arbitrary name signs became established very early in the history of ASL. The two systems, arbitrary and descriptive, are sometimes combined, usually for humorous purposes. For example, U.S. President Richard Nixon may be signed by signing to lie with his initial N as the hand shape, effectively meaning Nixon the liar. Hearing people learning ASL are also often assigned combined name signs. This is not traditional for deaf people. Sometimes people with very short English names, such as Anne, or Lee, or ones that flow easily, such as Larry, may never acquire a name sign, but may instead be referred to with finger spelling. Syntax ASL is a subject verb object SVO language. This default word order is sometimes altered by processes including topicalization and null elements. However, this is marked either with non-manual signals like eyebrow or body position or with prosodic markings such as pausing. These non-manual grammatical markings such as eyebrow movement or head shaking may optionally spread over the C command domain of the node which it is attached to. However, ASL is a pro-drop language, and when the manual sign that a non-manual grammatical marking is attached to is omitted, the non-manual marking obligatorily spreads over the C command domain. The full sentence structure in ASL is topic, subject, verb, object, subject, pronoun tag. Topics and tags are both indicated with non-manual features, and both give a great deal of flexibility to ASL word order. Within a noun phrase, the word order is noun number and noun adjective. ASL does not have a copulate linking. To be. Verb, for example, my hair is wet is signed. My hair wet. And my name is Pete may be signed. Name my topic P-E-T-E. -E. Tense and aspect. It has been claimed that tense in ASL is marked adverbially, and that ASL lacks a separate category of tense markers. However, Aaron's et al. 1992, 1995, argue that tense T is indeed a distinct category of syntactic head, and that the T node can be occupied either by a modal e.g. should or a lexical tense marker e.g. future tense. They support this claim by noting that only one such item can occupy the T slot. Aspect may be marked either by verbal inflection or by separate lexical items. These are ordered tense, negation, aspect, verb. Topic and main clauses A topic sets off background information that will be discussed in the following main clause. 
Topic constructions are not often used in standard English, but they are common in some dialects, as in That dog, I never could hunt him. Topicalization is used productively in ASL and often results in surface forms that do not follow the basic SVO word order. In order to non-manually mark topics, the eyebrows are raised and the head is tilted back during the production of a topic. The head is often lowered toward the end of the sign, and sometimes the sign is followed rapidly nodding the head. A slight pause follows the topic, setting it off from the rest of the sentence. Meat TM, I like LAMBAs for meat, I prefer lamb. Another way topics may be signed is by shifting the body. The signer may use the space on one side of his per body to sign the topic, and then shifts to the other side for the rest of the sentence. ASL utterances do not require topics, but their use is extremely common. They are used for purposes of information flow, to set up referent loci, see above, and to supply objects for verbs which are grammatically prevented from taking objects themselves, see below. Without a topic, the dog chased my cat is signed. Dog chase my cat. However, people tend to want to set up the object of their concern first and then discuss what happened to it. In English, we do this with passive clauses, my cat was chased by the dog. In ASL, topics are used with similar effect. My cat TM dog chase or literally. My cat, the dog chased it. If the word order of the main clause is changed, the meaning of the utterance also changes. My cat TM chased dogmians. My cat chased the dog. Or literally. My cat, it chased the dog. There are three types of non-manual topic markers, all of which involve raised eyebrows. The three types of non-manual topic markers are used with different types of topics and in different contexts, and the topic markings cannot spread over other elements in the utterance. Topics can be moved from and remain null in the main clause of an utterance, or topics can be base generated and either be co referential to either the subject or object in the main clause or be related to the subject of object by a semantic property. The first type of non manual marking, topic marking 1, TM1, is only used with a moved topic. TM1 is characterized by raised eyebrows, widened eyes, and head tilted backwards. At the end of the sign the head moves down and there is a pause, often with an eye blink, before the sentence is continued. The following is an example of a context in which the TM1 marking is used. Mary TM first John love. Mary, John loves. Or, John loves Mary. Topic marking 2, TM2, and topic marking 3, TM3, are both used with base-generated topics. TM2 is characterized by raised eyebrows, widened eyes, and the head tilted backwards and to the side. Toward the end of the sign the head moves forward and to the opposite side, and there is a pause and often an eye blink before continuing. For TM3 the eyebrows are raised and the eyes are opened wide, the head starts tilted down and jerks up and down, the lips are opened and raised, and the head is nodded rapidly a few times before pausing and continuing the sentence. Although both TM2 and TM3 accompany base-generated topics, they are used in different contexts. TM2 is used to introduce new information and change the topic of a conversation to something that the signer is going to subsequently characterize, while TM3 is used to introduce new information that the signer believes is already known by his per interlocutor. TM the 2nd of May be used with any base generated topic, whereas only topics that are co-referential with an argument in the sentence may be marked with TM3. An example of a TM2 marking used with a topic related to the object of the main clause is Vegetable TM2, John like corn. As for vegetables, John likes corn. An example of a TM2 marking used with a co-referential topic is Fresh vegetable TM2, John like X third. As for fresh vegetables, John likes them. X third represents a third person index. Another example of a TM2 marking with a co-referential topic is Johnny TM2, X3 RDI love Mary. As for John, he loves Mary. An example of a TM3 topic marking is 
Johnny TM3, X3 RDI Love Mary. You know, John, he loves Mary. ASL sentences may have up to two marked topics. Possible combinations of topic types are 2TM2 two topics, 2TM3 two topics, TM2 preceding TM1, TM3 preceding TM1, and TM2 preceding TM3. Sentences with these topic combinations in the opposite orders or with 2TM1 two topics are considered ungrammatical by native signers. Subject pronoun tags Information may also be added after the main clause as a kind of afterthought. In ASL this is commonly seen with subject pronouns. These are accompanied by a nod of the head, and make a statement more emphatic. Boy fall. The boy fell down. Versus Boy fall, he tag. The boy fell down, he did. The subject need not be mentioned, as in fall. He fell down. Versus fall. He tag. He fell down. He did. Aspect, topics, and transitivity. As noted above, in ASL aspectually marked verbs cannot take objects. To deal with this, the object must be known from context so that it does not need to be further specified. This is accomplished in two ways. The object may be made prominent in a prior clause, or it may be used as the topic of the utterance at hand. Of these two strategies, the first is the more common. For my friend was typing her term paper all night to be used with a durative aspect, this would result in my friend typed term paper. Type durative all night. The less colloquial topic construction may come out as My friend topic, term paper topic, type dorative all night. Negation Negated clauses may be signaled by shaking the head during the entire clause. A topic, however, cannot be so negated, the headshake can only be produced during the production of the main clause. A second type of negation starts with the verb and continues to the end of the clause. In addition, in many communities, negation is put at the end of the clause, unless there is a wholesaler question word. For example, the sentence, I thought the movie was not good, could be signed as, Before movie me see, think what? It good not. There are two manual signs that negate a sentence, not and none, which are accompanied by a shake of the head. None is typically used when talking about possession. English, I don't have any dogs, ASL, dog I have n-o-n-e-n-o-t negates a verb. English, I don't like to play tennis, ASL, tennis I like play not. Questions There are three types of questions with different types of constructions in ASL, WH questions, yes, no questions, and rhetorical questions, WH questions can be formed in a variety of ways, the WH word can appear only at the end of the sentence, only at the beginning of the sentence, at both the beginning and end of the sentence, or in SITU, I, A where the WH word is in the sentence structure before movement occurs. Manual WH signs are also accompanied by a non-manual grammatical marking, which includes lowered or scrunchy, a brows, a slight frown, head and body tilted forwards, slightly rounded lips, and sometimes a sideways head shake. There is disagreement about whether WH words move rightward or leftward in ASL. While some researchers argue for rightward movement in WH questions, others, including Petronio and Lillo Martin, have argued that ASL has leftward movement and WH words that appear to the right of the clause move by other processes. Arguments for leftward movement are based on the facts that if WH movement in ASL were rightward, ASL would be an exception to cross-linguistic generalizations that WH movement is leftward and that WH markers are not topics. Petronio and Lillo Martin also demonstrate that the rightward movement hypothesis allows utterances that native signers judge as ungrammatical but does not allow utterances that are considered grammatical. 
On the other hand, they show that the hypothesis that there is leftward WH movement with other processes accounting for WH elements appearing rightward accounts correctly for the same utterances that could not be explained by the rightward hypothesis. This movement can also be observed in the object position. For example, while yesterday must normally follow the object, it may precede the WHQ word. What? ASL also has questions where the WH word occurs twice, copied in final position. Yes, no questions also require non-manual markings. Similar to the non-manual marking for WH questions, the non-manual cue for yes, no questions include tilting the head and body forward. To distinguish the yes, no question marking from that of WH questions, the yes, no arcing also includes raised eyebrows and widened eyes as well as slightly pursed lips. Unlike WH questions, yes, no questions do not involve a change of word order, and the non-manual marking must be used over the whole utterance in order for it to be judged as a statement opposed to a question. You eat what? What are you eating? Raised eyebrows are also used for rhetorical questions which are not intended to elicit an answer. To distinguish the non-manual marking for rhetorical questions from that of yes, no questions, the body is in a neutral position opposed to tilted forward, and the head is tilted in a different way than in yes, no questions. Rhetorical questions are much more common in ASL than in English. For example, I don't like garlic, may be signed. I like negative what, rhetorical, garlic. This strategy is commonly used instead of signing the word because for clarity or emphasis. For instance, I love to eat pasta because I am Italian would be signed. Pasta I eat enjoy true, why, rhetorical, Italian I. Relative clauses Relative clauses are signaled by tilting back the head and raising the eyebrows and upper lip. This is done during the performance of the entire clause. There is no change in word order. For example, the dog which recently chased the cat came home would be signed. Recently dog chase cat, relative come home. Where the brackets here indicate the duration of the non-manual features. If the sign, recently, were made without these features, it would lie outside the relative clause, and the meaning would change to. The dog which chased the cat recently came home. Dyxis In ASL signers set up regions of space, loci, for specific reference, see above, these can then be referred to indexically by pointing at those locations with pronouns and indexical verbs. Pronouns Personal pronouns in ASL are indexic. That is, they point to their referent, or to a locus representing their referent. When the referent is physically present, pronouns involve simply pointing at the referent, with different handshapes for different pronominal uses. A G handshape is a personal pronoun, an extended B handshape with an outward palm orientation is a possessive pronoun, and an extended thumb. A handshape is a reflexive pronoun, these may be combined with numeral signs to sign. You too. Us three. All of them. Etc. If the referent is not physically present, the speaker identifies the referent and then points to a location, the locus, in the sign space near their body. This locus can then be pointed at to refer to the referent. Theoretically, any number of loci may be set up, as long as the signer and recipient remember them all, but in practice, no more than eight loci are used. Meyer 1990 demonstrates that only two grammatical persons are distinguished in ASL, first person and non-first person, as in Damon. Both persons come in several numbers as well as with signs such as my and by myself. Meyer provides several arguments for believing that ASL does not formally distinguish second from third person. For example, when pointing to a person that is physically present, a pronoun is equivalent to either you or s he depending on the discourse there is nothing in the sign itself nor in the direction of eye gaze or body posture that can be relied on to make this distinction that is the same formal sign can refer to any of several second or third persons which the indexic nature of the pronoun makes clear 
In English, indexic uses also occur, as in, I need you to go to the store and you to stay here, but not so ubiquitously. In contrast, several first-person ASL pronouns, such as the plural possessive, are look different from their non-first-person equivalents, and a couple of pronouns do not occur in the first person at all, so first and non-first persons are formally distinct. Personal pronouns have separate forms for singular, I, and, U, S, He, and plural, We, and, You, They. These have possessive counterparts. My, are, your, his, her, your, their. In addition, there are pronoun forms which incorporate numerals from two to five. The three of us, the four of you, them, etc. Though the dual pronouns are slightly idiosyncratic in form, i.e., they have a k rather than two handshape, and the wrist nods rather than circles. These numeral incorporated pronouns have no possessive equivalents. Also among the personal pronouns are the self forms, by myself, by your, themselves, etc. These only occur in the singular and plural, there is no numeral incorporation, and are only found as subjects. They have derived emphatic and characterizing forms, with modifications used for derivation rather like those for verbal aspect. The characterizing Pronoun is used when describing someone who has just been mentioned. It only occurs as a non-first-person singular form. Finally, there are formal pronouns used for honored guests. These occur as singular and plural in the non-first person, but only as singular in the first person. ASL is a pro-drop language, which means that pronouns are not used when the referent is obvious from context and is not being emphasized. Indexical verbs Within ASL there is a class of indexical, often called directional, verbs. These include the signs for see, pay, give, show, invite, help, send, bite, etc. These verbs include an element of motion that indexes one or more reference, either physically present or set up through the referent locus system. If there are two loci, the first indicates the subject and the second the object, direct or indirect depending on the verb, reflecting the basic word order of ASL. For example, give is a bi-indexical verb based on a flattened M-O handshape. For I give you, the hand moves from myself toward you. For you give me, it moves from you to me. C is indicated with a V handshape. Two loci for a dog and a cat can be set up, with the sign moving between them to indicate. The dog sees the cat. If it starts at the locus for dog and moves toward the locus for cat, or the cat sees the dog, with the motion in the opposite direction, or the V hand can circulate between both loci and myself to mean, we, the dog, the cat, and myself, see each other. The verb, to be in pawn. Index fingers pointed at each other and alcoholically approaching and separating, is signed at the location of the pain, head for headache, cheek for toothache, abdomen for stomachache, etc. This is normally done in relation to the signer's own body, regardless of the person feeling the pain, but may take also use the locus system, especially for body parts which are not normally part of the signed space, such as the leg. There are also spatial verbs such as put up and put below, which allow signers to specify where things are or how they move them around. Time-sequenced ordering ASL makes heavy use of time-sequenced ordering, meaning that events are signed in the order in which they occur. For example, for I was late to class last night because my boss handed me a huge stack of work after lunch yesterday, one would sign. Yesterday lunch finish, boss give me work big stack, night class late me. In stories, however, ordering is malleable, since one can choose to sequence the events either in the order in which they occurred or in the order in which one found out about them. Syntactic word order in addition to its basic topic comment structure, ASL typically places an adjective after a noun, though it may occur before the noun for stylistic purposes. Numerals also occur after the noun, a very rare pattern among oral languages. English, I have a brown dog. 
ASL, dog brown eye have adverbs, however, occur before the verbs. Most of the time adverbs are simply the same sign as an adjective, distinguished by the context of the sentence. English, I enter the house quietly. ASL, how's I quiet enter when the scope of the adverb is the entire clause, as in the case of time, it comes before the topic. This is the only thing which can appear before the topic in ASL, time topic comment. English, I'm going to the store at 9 a.m., ASL, 9-H-O-U-R morning store I go modal verbs come after the main verb of the clause. English, I can go to the store for you, ASL, for you, store I go can. Conjunctions There is no separate sign in ASL for the conjunction in. Instead, multiple sentences or phrases are combined with a short pause between. Often, lists are specified with a listing and ordering technique, a simple version of which is to show the length of the list first with the nondominant hand, then to describe each element after pointing to the nondominant finger that represents it. English, I have three cats and they are named Billy, Bob, and Buddy. ASL, cat I have three list. Name, first of three list B-I-L-L-Y, second of three list B-O-B, third of three list B-U-D-D-Y. There is a manual sign for the conjunction or, but the concept is usually signed non-manually with a slight shoulder twist. English, I'll leave at 5 or 6 o'clock. ASL, I leave time 5, shoulder shift, time 6, the manual sign for the conjunction but is similar to the sign for different. It is more likely to be used in pidgin signed English than in ASL. Instead, shoulder shifts can be used, similar to, or, with appropriate facial expression. English, I like to swim, but I don't like to run. ASL, PSE, swim I like, but run I like not ASL, swim I like, shoulder shift, run I like not notes references Aarons, Deborah, 1994. Aspects of the Syntax of American Sign Language, Unpublished, Doctoral Dissertation. Boston University, Boston, Massachusetts. Bahan, Benjamin, 1996. Non-Manual Realization of Agreement in American Sign Language, PDF. Boston University. Retrieved November 25, 2012. Klima, Edward and Bellugi, Ursula, 1979. The Signs of Language. Cambridge, Harvard University Press. ISBN 0-674-807952. Liddell, Scott K. 2003. Grammar, Gesture, and Meaning in American Sign Language. Cambridge University Press. Nidal, Carol. 2002. Language Across Modalities, ASL Focus and Question Constructions. Linguistic Variation Yearbook, 2, 1, 71-98. Petronio, Karen, and Lillo Martin, Diane. 1997. WH Movement and the Position of Spec CP, Evidence from American Sign Language. Language, 73, 1, 18 to 57. Pickler, Deborah Chen, 2001. Word Order Variation and Acquisition in American Sign Language, Unpublished, Doctoral Dissertation. University of Connecticut. Stokoe, William C., 1976. Dictionary of American Sign Language on Linguistic Principles. Linstick Press. ISBN 0-932130-01-1. Stokoe, William C., 1960. Sign Language Structure, an Outline of the Visual Communication Systems of the American Deaf. Studies in Linguistics, Occasional Papers, No. 8. Buffalo, Department of Anthropology and Linguistics, University of Buffalo. Further reading Signing Naturally by Ken Mykos The Syntax of American Sign Language, Functional Categories and Hierarchical Structure by Carol Jan Nidal Grammar, Gesture, and Meaning in American Sign Language by Scott K. Liddell Linguistics of American Sign Language, An Introduction, 4th ed. By Clayton Valley.